Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming to our dynamic DNS webinar. My name is uh, Dwayne Pettis, and we're going to be presenting this webinar in probably about 30 seconds. We want to make sure that everybody is on and make sure that everybody is here. So we'll give about 30 more seconds, and then we will present uh, just shortly. Thank you very much. Okay. So once again, we've come to our Dyn DNS webinar, and we are happy that you have decided to join us for this webinar. Um, want to introduce our panelists so that we can know who's here. My name is Dwayne Pettis, and I work for Calyptix. We also have Warren Parker, who's here. Warren. Great. Thanks, Dwayne. I'm happy to be here with you today. Mm -hmm. Now, for the people who are online, we have a special guest, which we don't normally get here when we're doing our webinars, but we have our developer who developed the Dyn DNS for Calyptix, Bryce, on the line. I don't know if Bryce can unmute. And I hope he can. But we have our, I know that he's here because I can see him here. So our lead developer who uh, presented and created this Dyn DNS for us um, is also on the line. And he hopefully, if you have questions for him as well, we can take care of that. So let's get started. Um, before we start, we just wanted to give you, just in case you have to leave the webinar or you have to go or go away, all of the information that we're going to be presenting from is on our online portal. So if you go to our online portal at online.calyptics.com forward slash DDNS, you will see all of the information that we're going to be presenting on. Now, also, if you're new to Calyptics and you don't have an online portal account, or any other account, or would like to know more information about Calyptix, you can contact our sales team, and you can contact them via email at the email address provided or the phone number. I'm going to leave this on the line just for a brief second so that you can take a snapshot, um, just so that we can um, make sure that you get all of the information that you need. So here is our agenda that we're going to be going over, and it's going to be a very, very short webinar. But we're going to talk about what Dyn DNS is. We're going to talk about where you can find it. Uh, we're going to start a live demo and go through the live demo process of us uh, from start to finish of what you um, need to know about Dyn DNS and Calyptix, um, some of the issues that you guys reported, and so forth. And we'll go get rid of our security risks and make sure that everything is there. And then we'll have questions at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. What is Dyn DNS? So it's basically a, a way to update a dynamic IP address associated with a domain name so that if your IP address ever changes, uh, the DNS association is automatically updated, propagates, and you'll be able to access uh, any device you have automatically through no manual intervention other than setting up in the first place. That's a good, 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 good response. For me, it's an easy way to find out how to get to my customer. Um, I'm not very good at the numbers, so I can't remember IP addresses all that well. And it gives me the ability to just use a local host name or domain name so that I can reach my client, um, as Warren said, and it updates automatically just in case it changes. So it's a good way for me just to use host names and domain names just to reach our people. So in the ever ending story of a computer, we wanted to show you the breakdown of how things go. So if a client behind Ecliptix asks for a specific DNS uh, name, so let's say they're trying to go to remote.abcpro.com, they'll hit that request, that request will go to the DNS provider. At the same time, the internet host is updating and saying, hey, my IP address is here. This is who a, uh, remote.abcproservices.com resolves to. So once that's there, it will send the information and then it will trigger the Dyn DNS to go down to the computer that we're going to, and then it will give the information back to our client. So basically it's like a round robin of people telling the Dyn DNS server who they are, what IP address they are, and it resolves to. And that's how we do that. In this example, uh, the internal device that's behind the firewall, they're running the Dyn DNS client rather than uh, what we're going to be doing, which is having an agent on the firewall take care of that. Yes. So where can we find Dyn DNS on the Calyptix? Actually, on the Calyptix, we have not put it there. We put it in our my.calyptix.com. And once again, if you guys don't have access to my.calyptix.com, we recommend that you contact the sales team and they'll get in touch with us so that we can set you up an account. 
Um, but to access it, we would go to my.calyptics.com, we would log in, and then we will give further information on how we do it. So to give that information, Warren. So after you log in, you head over to uh, your portal. You look on the left-hand side, the DDNS names, so that's gonna give you uh, the information that you're looking for, uh, your WAN, uh, primary WAN, and the DDNS name. And then you can take that and go to your domain registrar. And we'll, we'll cover that in a second. Mm -hmm. So instead of us just telling you what's going on, we decided that we're going to start a live demo and it's always a great pleasure for us to start a live demo because we hope everything goes well so we're going to go ahead and show you exactly what's going on from the standpoint of the calyptics so here we are logged into the mycalyptics.com uh, support uh, web page mm -hmm. and we're going to come over here on the left hand side to ddns names that's going to give us what we're looking for mm -hmm. all right so here it is. This is the Dyn DNS name uh, representing this IP address, which is the public IP address of the firewall. So one thing that I recommend if you guys are copying and you copy, cut, and paste of the Dyn DNS name, as Warren said, the IP address is down the bottom. Don't copy the IP address, else the Dyn DNS name is not going to work. So the Dyn DNS name starts with the WAN0 and ends with the Calyptics.net. Um, this is a proprietary uh, uh, piece of software that we put on ourselves, so it is only going to work with Calyptix. We don't recommend that you try to add anything else uh, before or after the DynDNS.Calyptix.com because it's not going to work. So Bryce has pretty much locked this down, and we greatly appreciate this. So what we do with this, with our DynDNS name, is we take that and then we go to our domain registrar. Now, this particular one is Namecheap, but GoDaddy Network Solutions, or if you do your own DNS hosting, then you could go there as well. But here we want to, because this is such an unwieldy name, we don't want to use this uh, anywhere. We want to create a CNAME record, which is going to be an alias uh, in the form of a subdomain that attaches onto the primary domain. So this is going to be, for example, demo.abcproservices.com. And here's our CNAME record. This is the DDNS name. We save it. Now, demo.abcproservices.com is uh, attached to that DDNS name. And it should always resolve to the IP address that's at that site. <laughs> so now, we're going to talk about some of the issues that partners have said. One of the things, major reasons why this we created Dyn DNS was because uh, some of our small business partners have limited resources and um, they need to be able to access small sites um, with a lot of with little resources. So with that being said, getting a static IP address for a small site of three or four people might be too expensive or it might not even be available in their location. So this will help you reach those clients that have um, smaller offices, remote people. Um, another thing is the Dyn DNS services that they had before, they kept shutting down. So out of the blue, you would have a Dyn DNS service. Um, I think one of the ones out there now, um, is it uh, OpenDNS owns Dyn DNS, I think now, but they don't have a free version anymore. They only have the paid version. So there are some free versions of Dyn DNS, but um, they may shut down. So these are the things that they have be, been reporting. The next thing that they reported was having a client that you have behind your firewall is always a security risk. Um, if people leave the company or it has to update through your firewall, having a piece of software behind your firewall is not necessarily a good thing when it has to reach out and touch the internet. So these were some of the security risks that people expressed to us. So we went back and decided, hey, Bryce, who is our one of our, uh, our top developers, Bryce, can you, can you resolve their issues? Can you create a Dyn DNS that has no reliability on any other company, just us. And he went back and he created the Dyn DNS and he said, actually, it actually didn't take him that long. He said, hey, it's done. And we were like, really? So our Dyn DNS is, is it's, as long as you have a subscription, it's free to you. Um, it's, it tracks all of the Dyn DNS in Calyptics, so you don't need to spend money on a static IP address. Um, you can control the Dyn DNS, and so it won't shut down. So we have all control over it. So it's not gonna be something that um, some other company decides later, oh, we're dissolving that part of our company. 
So, and then you have to look for something else. Um, it's also fully integrated in some of the things that we work for in Calyptics, whether it be the GUI, the quarantine, let's encrypt in integration, these things work. And the best part of it is there's no third party software that has to go on your network. So it eliminates that security risk that we have. So with you guys asking something from us, we were able to create what you wanted. So one of the major things with Dyn DNS and talking about an access enforcer is what happens when I go and upgrade my device? So if I upgrade my device, does that Dyn DNS name stay with me or does it is it attached to the device? And this was one of the major, major security risks that we had um, on the Calyptix device. So the way they they resolved this issue is we made the Dyn DNS name associated with a site not necessarily an access enforcer. So you can upgrade your access enforcer from an AE800 to a 1500, and it will not bother the Dyn DNS name because it's not associated with the actual device. It's associated with the site that we create for that user. Now, we do have a couple notes in here. For our partners who enjoy swapping devices around and making sure that they have a working site, it is essential that you guys call us and let us know the new site name of that device. Because if we know the site name of that device, now we can associate that device with your Dyn DNS. Without it, it's gonna pose a problem because you're gonna try to get to a site that we haven't associated that particular new box with, and you won't be able to use your Dyn DNS. So once again, we have a couple of different ways of doing that. You can um, email support, and get that. We also have a public site, which is um, on our public facing website slash site name, which you can change that as well there. So as long as we know where your device is and what site it's associated with, your Dyn DNS will work. So if you are relying on a site with Dyn DNS, uh, and for whatever reason you need to move a device, uh, let us know so we can update that. That way you uh, can just keep running without many, any changes on your end. Mm -hmm. So the million dollar question that we have to ask you guys, and it's actually rhetorical, is, is your static IP address really static? Will it ever change? And most people think that your static IP address is static. Whereas in support of Calyptics, we have seen your ISP change, your ISP, it changes your IP address without you even knowing it. And they've given your uh, IPs away and people can't reach them, things of that sort. We've also seen with some of our bigger partners who think, oh, well, I have a static IP address and I make all of my people get static IPs. Then all of a sudden somebody comes in like a Google Fiber or AT&T Fiber and they offer you five gig instead of your one gig download speed now. So they say, all right, I'll take this because it's a great deal. And with this, you get a new IP address. So is your static IP address really static? With the Dyn DNS, you get the ability to, even if you upgrade your internet service from one static IP address to the other, the Calyptix will know that information and you can always use your Dyn DNS name. It's surprising how frequently static IPs change. Yes, very much so. We've seen it happen a lot. So some of the advantages that we have in Dyn DNS, um, when you're working with, it will work with either a dynamic IP address, it'll work with a static IP address. It's just the best way to find your clients. Um, let's say we're doing uh, SPS maintenance. So if we're doing SPS maintenance, and you're looking for one of your boxes and we are doing an upgrade on our system, you don't know where your IP address is. With the Dyn DNS, you will know exactly where it is. So one of the things that we wanted to talk to you guys about um, here is creating subdomains of your normal domain. With this, you now have the ability to do a couple different things. One, if you have smaller companies, they don't have to get a domain name. They can just use your subdomain and then they can use a subdomain of your domain name. Um, this will help them in saving money. 
this will help you keep track of devices. So in this example, um, we have uh, on the right side, we're creating a subdomain under the domain for reliable services. Now, Reliable is one of our great partners up in the Ohio area. And Rick Barhorse was nice enough to allow us to use his domain name as the example. So Rick has Joe's Seafood, which he has one access enforcer at. So he has a site that's called Joe's Seafood. We know this. So he created under his reliable-usa.com a Joe's Seafood. So now he done he now gives that domain name to uh, Joe Seafood. So now it's free advertising for him when he's using his Calyptics VPN, when he's using his uh, gatekeeper, they will always see reliable-usa.com. So the same thing can happen to our other partners. Any of our other partners you could think of, Warren? We got some up in um, Boston, old, good old Bill Driscoll. Bill Driscoll with Hub Technology. Hub Technology. Great guy up there. He can use hub.com com as his domain name and if he had trinity school it would be trinity school dot hub dot hub dot com for his domain name how about a little bit south oh if we go south then let's go to florida who's in florida uh cnw cnw eric eric keen and that's uh mario eric those guys down there great group of guys down there in the florida area they own cncwnow.com so they can use their subdomain on cwnow.com for any of their partners so that they can always have their, their not only their partners reach it, but their techs. If their techs need to reach these um, devices, they don't need to know the name because they'll know, oh, that's Trinity. Trinity.cwnow.com is one of them. Anywhere, let's go left. Who's on the left side? West about, side? West side. Uh, halfway to the coast, we got uh, Upright. Upright. Jeff and Ken. That's, oh, Jeff and Ken. Ken. Okay. Ken Schaefer. Great guy. Used to be CSRA Technologies. Now he's Upright Technology. Um, Worley. Kim Wor Worley. Kim Worley. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, great guy. Um, they can use Upright.com. And um, we have one more person that we do want to let you guys know. We're not just US based. We have uh, people all over, but one of the great guys up in the Canada area, in the New Brunswick area is uh scott beck scott beck has becktech.com so these guys can use their domain names which they already have create subdomains and now not only where their their um clients know where their machines are but their techs will know that as well so it's free advertising you can always find your devices we wanted to mention this because this is one of the intricate parts of the dying dns that was created you always know where your devices are. As long as um, they have a subdomain under your name, you just know what they are. So let's continue on with the demo and we could talk a little bit about how we can use this Dyn DNS. So let's say we ping the uh, subdomain we already created. So we got an IP address right here, but instead of doing that, let's just log into that address. So you can see up here that, uh-oh, we're not secure. We're actually already logged into it, but we were getting the self-signed certificate error, which I'm sure that most people realize you're going to get when you don't have a certificate attached, or if you're accessing a device using the public IP address. Hmm. So later on, and we'll show you pretty much how to get rid of that, but let's talk about why you get the self-signed certificate and how you can get rid of it with the access enforcer. So, Dyn DNS also works with our integration of Let's Encrypt, which the guys were so nice enough to put a self-signed certificate um, on the so a self-signed certificate process on the device that gets rid of your certificate errors. Now, do note this self-signed certificate works with your port forwarding page, with your um, Calyptics VPN, anything that you're using it, you can have this. So, with the Dyn DNS and the Let's Encrypt, we get the ability to get rid of all of our self-signed certificates. So what Warren is doing right now is we're going to create this Let's Encrypt and we'll show you how easy it is to do. So Warren went to Setup, Network, Domains and Certificates on the left side, and it brought up, hey, just add your domain, click the box if you want to add it to the GUI, save it, and now it's going to allow you to request the Let's Encrypt. 
And you'll see Let's Encrypt is a very, very good process because it allows you to, um, before your certificates were yearly, Let's Encrypt allows you to um, renew those certificates more often to make it more um, secure for you guys here. So, so what happens in the background every 90 days or every three months, uh, we'll go out, we'll ask Let's Encrypt for another domain validation certificate, install it automatically, and so you're in, per in perpetuity, you've got security, you've got a domain verification slash validation certificate. Great. So what I'm going to ask Warren to do after it now, with all Calyptic's um, process, you have to allow the system to restart the services in order to make them work. A lot of times we jump the gun and we don't allow this process, then we get calls to support like, hey, it's not working. Then when we log in, you guys think we did something magical, but it's not. It's just allowing the services to um, restart. So Warren's going to type in a demo, and now you can see that we have a certificate on the device, so you will not be unsecure anymore. So this is another method of how we can make Dyn DNS work with our Let's Encrypt. Um, now, uh, after we do that, we do want to show a couple more things. Um, let's talk about the applications that work. So look, we're going to talk about them, and then I'm going to ask Warren to show you kind of where things are. So working with the Calyptics GUI, we just saw where we can log in and it's a secure. Um, this also works instead of using the IP address in your Calyptics VPN, you can use a Dyn DNS name, and then it'll get propagated to all of your um, Calyptics VPN clients so that just in case your IP address changes, you don't have to go back to every client and, and change that IP address. Um, it also works with our gatekeeper program, our quarantine summary. And if you have any static routes or port forwarding um, that's going inside of the box or adjacent to our Calyptix device, um, you'll have the ability to use this Dyn DNS name to get to those as well. So Warren, if you can, if you could pull back up the Access Enforcer, we can take a look at some of these places. Alrighty, so we've already shown you how to access the GUI via the, the name. Uh, for Calyptics VPN, we can come over here and see that we're, that's the, that's the address that we're handing out. So uh, if, it, if the IP address associated never changes, DNS will propagate and all your users with their installed VPN clients will still be able to connect even after the IP address change. Warren, before you leave this page, okay, so we want to give you a sneak preview of what's going on. Now, don't tell everybody, but we're going to just give you a sneak preview. We have been working on MFA with our Calyptics VPN. And the guys were nice enough to put it in this box that we have here so that we could just give you a sneak, sneak preview of the MFA that's on the box that's going to be on your Calyptics VPN clients. So when you click the None button, we have access to Duo, which we can set up each of our um, clients with Duo so that you can use MFA with our Calyptics VPN client. This will be in you guys' hands in a couple of weeks, hopefully, so that you will have the ability to have um, MFA on your Calyptics VPN clients. But we're, we're not going to tell the developers yet that we told you guys. So we just want to keep it quiet. So another thing, while we're here, we might as well show you under Setup General, we've added a couple more things. One is the multi-factor authentication to the Calyptics devices. Um, you get the ability, once you click that, to set up MFA on your devices. So we've also upgraded our um, UPS actions. So instead of our UPS being 60% only, for you guys with bigger boxes like Bill up in Boston, he has a huge uh, box that uh, UPS that lasts uh, close to, I think, two hours. Instead of it shutting down after an hour, he gets the ability to set up different time periods and things like that. So we have a couple of things that we're adding on the boxes. The developers have been working really, really hard on trying to get this done. Uh, under the setup, I'm sorry, security, email, quarantine summary, instead of having the IP address there, Warren is going to put in demo.abcproservices there so that once you want to get to your quarantine summary page, you can have it there. The final page that I would like Warren to show is under security, network, and the gatekeeper. So under the gatekeeper, which as you can tell, we've changed a little bit of the interface a little bit, under the end user URL, when you put in your subdomain, so let's say we're going demo.abcproservices.com colon 5443 slash gatekeeper, then we'll have the ability to use that. However, in this instance, 
we're using ABC Pro demo ABC Pro services. If this was your domain name here as a subdomain like we had before of Joe Seafood dot reliable dash USA dot com, every time that they went to the gate people program, they would have free you would have free advertising and it'd be ingrained in them to utilize your services because you're giving this. One of the other key things is you're offering these people a service, your clients. So if by some chance um, you can take this service away or you can give this service freely to them or you can charge them. So it's just another method for um, us to uh, help our partners out in gaining and, and, and utilizing our services to help them. Thanks, Warren. So the last thing that we want to do is tell you guys about the online portal and to let you know that most of the information that we have right now um, is on online.calyptics.com. If you don't have access to that, please contact sales again so that we can um, make sure that you have access to our online portal. If you don't have access to our my.calyptics.com, please contact sales again and the number is down the bottom or the email address for us or sales is down there and we'll give you access to all of these things. We did wanna thank you for coming to our Dine DNS uh, webinar. And we wanna let you know that if you have any questions, we'll answer those questions right now. Okay. Um, Mike uh, just has a comment and a question. Uh, DNS does work with Cloudflare. Uh, just make sure that you don't proxy the address and that you copy only the dynamic DNS and all the way up to the dot calyptics.net. Um, question Mike has is um, I restrict WAN access, admin access just to the office IP. Can we use Calyptics DDNS instead of hard coding our IP into each of the Calyptics WAN admin access? Sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to repeat that so that we don't, we're going to try to get it without the echo so that we can hear what's going on. So can you repeat that one more last time with the question? I'm sorry. Um, Mike says, I restrict WAN access to just our office IP. Can we use mm -hmm. Calyptics DDNS instead of hard coding our IP into each Calyptics for WAN admin access? On the remote management page? I believe he's talking about the remote management page when he locks down the Dyn DNS name. We have not put it there because we have not thought of it. However, now that you've mentioned it, Mike, I can go back to a developer and see if that's possible to put the Dyn DNS name there. It's just something that you are the first person to ever think of that. So now that we have it, we'll go back and ask our developers to use under the setup general remote management that Dyn DNS name. Okay, um, Jeff has a question. Can this be used in the local IP field in the IPsec policy config? not in the local field only in the remote as of now the guys after we've gotten past the there are, are a couple things on the horizon one of which is we're going to start implementing a um dns server a dns server on the device itself the other thing is we're going to revamp our ipsec and how our ipsec works during that process then we're going to be able to change the local ip address on the device itself but at present, it does not work on the local IP address um, under the IPsec as of yet, but it is moving towards that, yes. We just had another question here. Uh, someone asks if uh, this Dyn DNS works on all of our WAN uh, addresses, to two different ISPs we've got for failover. Uh, right now, Dyn DNS works for your primary WAN. We have plans to uh, add secondary WANs, but we wanted to get this out in front of everybody uh, to, to try out and use before we added that functionality, but it is on the roadmap. We do intend to add that. Yes. Any more questions? I think this might be the same question. Will DDNS also work for IPsec VPN tunnels on the AE? Yes. Um, for the remote side, yes, it works, but not for the local side. So for the local side, we still have to have either our primary IP address or our secondary WAN IP address there for now until they revamp the IPsec page. Okay. Um, Jay says, for those who have VPN clients, is it mandatory to change them to a new DDNS name or they can continue as 
to use the static IP? Well, if you have, uh, if, if the IP address of your, of your firewall changes, then you'll have to go to each installed VPN client and, and update them. However, if you use the dynamic DNS name, like in the fashion that we just showed you, then that change would happen automatically and you wouldn't have to intervene with all your, your users and their installed VPN clients. So we would recommend doing that with the domain name rather than the IP address, uh, even if it is static. Because as we, as we went over, it's surprising how frequently static IPs change. And also, just a note, if you've already deployed your Calyptics VPN clients, then what we have to do is just let you guys know um, we have to change it on the firewall under setup VPN, Calyptics VPN settings. But then we have to send an email to all of our partners, letting them know, hey, right click your red circle and go to edit config and you can put in the dying DNS name instead of the IP address there. Once that's all done, then you'll never have to change it again. Uh, this one's probably out of scope. What MFA will you be supporting? The MFA that we'll be supporting for the Calyptix VPN client is Duo. The MFA for the device... TOTP. Yes. And I just want to chime in. Uh, Thanks, man. Regarding Calyptix VPN, Duo is what's in the next release coming out. We will be adding TOTP. That's just the release thereafter. Also, and hi, you just I'm heard Bryce. from Bryce, the developer of the Dyn DNS, and I thank him for coming on and answering questions because a lot of the questions, when you guys think you're talking to us, you're technically talking to Lawrence and Bryce and Nick and and uh, Aaron and Kurt. You're talking to those guys. We just talk on their behalf. Any other questions? Yeah, a couple is coming in. Um, ben asked, can you use Gatekeeper as well with a Bastion host at the office? Can we use yes? We can use Gatekeeper with the uh, domain with the um, Dyn DNS name. Yeah. Um, that's a very very good feature um, to use, and that's why we wanted to recommend that you guys use subdomains because um, when your clients have to type in the Gatekeeper name, they now see your domain name, um, and it's branded for your domain if you use a subdomain under your name. Okay. Tom asks, uh, will work with multi-line SD-WAN configs? No, not at present. Um, once again, we're trying to add and implement those. So we're trying our best to add as much as we can, but um, this was a request that was given and Bryce was just nice enough to go ahead and, hey, let's put it in there and then we will um, add it later. But if Bryce has more information, that would be great. Um, I'm going to pick the last two questions. Um, it's multi-factor authenticated um, related. Will Google Authenticator be considered in the future? And also, is there a cost to Duo? There is a cost. So to as Google? mentioned, Calyptix, or sorry, uh, Google Authenticator is TOTP, and that is planned uh, for the release after next. And Duo is free for up to 10 configured users. Thank you, Bryce. I don't think we should have previewed it. <laughs> the last question. This one's unrelated, but uh, can we get an individual enable size disabled option added to the rules page? I'll have to answer that one offline. Um, just to make sure that uh, people that are watching can strictly stick to what we have. Thanks. Yep, that's about it. Want to thank you all for coming to this uh, webinar that we had. We tried to make this one as quick as possible, but we did want to highlight the features of the Calyptix device and the things that we're bringing to you guys. Um, Dying DNS was a huge, huge add to the Calyptix device because a lot of our partners are using dynamic IPs, um, and we wanted to give them the ability to reach those devices as quickly as possible. Um, want to thank you all for coming. Um, Gonna ask Warren, you have anything else, Warren? Uh, I think we've said it all. Bryce, Bryce, do you have anything? Uh, nothing specific. I will, you know, there's a couple of notes we could get into on how IPsec does and does not work with the uh, new dynamic DNS name, but I know that we've got a time limit, so I'll leave that for another discussion.
All right, and we can answer those um, online or put them on the online portal so you can have it. We're going to turn it back over to Joseph, and we thank you all for coming to our Dying DNS webinar. Thank you, everyone, for coming out today. Um, we will have this recorded and uh, sent out, so you'll be seeing this on the online portal and also on YouTube. So keep an eye out for that in your email for a link to the to the video and also um, the the notes. But thank you, everyone. Have a great day.